Hi, I'm Jeff Chester from the United States Naval Observatory in Washington, and you are going off orbit. This time on Off Orbit, we join solar imaging specialist Greg People of SunGazer.net. Join us for a rare view of nature as we explore in the distance. And welcome to the premiere episode of Off Orbit. There are billions of suns out there, stars out there. In our own galaxy, there could possibly be 400 billion stars. But there's only one sun, and we've got the perfect view of it right here, right next to our planet. When you look up at the nighttime sky and you see all of those stars out there, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, what do they look like? Now, we can't fly out there to look at them, but we have an excellent example of them right here in our own neighborhood. And using these backyard telescopes, it allows us to zoom in on it and see things. We can't go out there to see them, but we have this example right here in our face glowing all of the time. Right now we're in uh, North Bethesda. It's about 10 miles north of the District of uh, Columbia. The process for me of taking an image of the sun, or of just looking at the sun, always starts with uh, getting the equipment out and fine-tuning it to, uh, to point and track the sun across the sky. We're told our entire lives not to look at the sun. From the moment that you walk outside, mom says, don't look up there, it's gonna harm you. Well, with um, solar astronomy, we're using very dedicated solar filters that filter almost all of the light out and it allows you to see it very safely. So uh, through my site, my website, and through my outreach efforts with uh, my telescopes, everybody's allowed to look at the sun. So I'll bring out a pier. I'll bring out the mount that holds the entire telescope system up and cameras. Probably one of the most important portions of uh, the entire setup is having a rock solid mount that can hold all this equipment, keep it pointed in one place for a long amount of time. It has to be steady to hold this much equipment. I mean, uh, there's probably 75 pounds worth of telescopes on this one mount. But at the same time, it's got to be flexible enough uh, to move across the sky and track the sun. So you have to kind of get the weight and balance of it correct uh, in order to get an, an accurate track and, and follow this thing. You would think it would be easy to, uh, to find the sun in the sky and track it, but actually it's kind of difficult when you start to look through these big solar scopes and keep it dead center. Now it's easy with your eye to track uh, the sun, but when you put on a uh, high powered camera and try to track individual solar phenomena on the sun, that gets a little tricky. Well, for me, uh, the beginning of uh, astronomy and, and looking into astronomy all started with the Voyager spacecraft back in the 70s. Uh, that was in the media. I clipped out all of the different um, articles that was in the newspapers, and that got me tuned into space. And uh, from there, I studied it throughout high school. And when I went into the military, I had the opportunity to look at a few telescopes out there, uh, around the world for that matter. And uh, then one day, I walked up to a telescope that was pointed at the sun and I knew instantly that that was the avenue of the hobby for me. Now, when I take pictures of the sun, I, um, I have a camera on the end of the scope and the data is fed right into a laptop computer. And I use special programs to capture the sun and to manipulate it and to make it look pretty. Since it's so bright, we'll need a shroud so we can block the light and see the computer screen. Well, you have a variety of different solar filters that you can use to uh, peer into the sun. You have uh, white light filters that just simply show a white disc with the sunspots if there's some on the sun that day. You have um, hydrogen alpha filters that look into the far red portion of the visual spectrum. You have calcium filters that are down in the violet portion. When you think about it, uh, you think that light travels instantaneously, but it actually has a speed, the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. And when the light leaves the sun, it takes eight minutes for it to travel that 93 million miles to reach the Earth. 
So when we look at the sun, we're actually seeing the way it was eight minutes ago. Well, the camera captures in black and white, so we colorize the image to get a more aesthetically pleasing view of the sun. In this image, the brighter area is an active region, or a huge magnetic storm uh, can sometimes brighten and become a flare and send out X-ray radiation into space. During uh, solar maximum, that's when you're going to start to see things like bursts of uh, X-ray matter going out into space and actually reaching Earth, and that's going to have an effect uh, on our satellites. But for the backyard observer, it's a fun thing. Uh, when I know there's something happening out there, I'll tune the cameras in, and I look forward to an explosion on the sun. You have the northern lights when that solar material comes across space and travels over to us and swirls down into our atmosphere. It produces those beautiful glowing lights. When I take pictures of the sun, I like to share it. And that's, that's really one of the coolest things about solar astronomy. When you look in the eyepiece and you see the sun, you can't keep that in. You've got to tell somebody. And for me, I take photographs and I like to put them out online, whether it's on my site or offer them up to sites like Space Weather or the Astronomy Picture of the Day. It goes on and on. I put them out there for folks to look at. The History Channel has used it before. MSNBC has used some of my images before. Uh, the National Air and Space Museum, Nature Magazine, Sky and Telescope, Astronomy Magazine, things like that. I run a website uh, called sungazer.net, and it's really just a uh, online photo album for the images that I've taken. I, I put everything up there that I shoot, and I try to give a little bit more information to folks that may uh, wander across it through a search engine or something. Uh, they can see not only hydrogen pictures, calcium pictures, but also 3D images. Uh, zoomable images using flash animation to where you can zoom the sun and you're sitting there at three o'clock in the morning and you can't sleep with your bunny slippers on. Uh, you can grab a hold of your mouse and just zoom in on the sun and check it out that way. I also put um, videos online of the stuff that I shoot and a couple of videos that are just kind of like entertainment purposes. As long as they, uh, I can take a photograph, put it out there, and maybe one day um, a kid is slipping through a magazine and sees one of my solar shots, and it ignites that spark inside of them. Solar observing and imaging provides one of the uh, most awesome views you'll get in all of astronomy. And uh, it's all right there in front of us. Whether you go out to public star parties or you buy your own equipment and take your own pictures, uh, it allows you a phenomenal view of something that most humans on Earth rarely get to see. So if you get the chance to look at the sun, I suggest you do it. It's that good.